Hello everyone. Welcome to the bridge for Palm Sunday. This is a special time in our church's calendar, marking the beginning of Holy Week, when we follow Jesus on his journey to the cross. We see people rejoicing, then feeling afraid, angry, exhausted, lonely and heartbroken. As we continue to stay at home and to stay safe from the coronavirus, we may well be feeling some of those emotions. I've had lots of prayer chats with God this week, asking him to help me understand what is happening and for him to strengthen us all every day. Today, on the way into Jerusalem, Jesus sent his disciples ahead of him. Go into Bethphage, he said. You'll find a donkey and a foal tied up there. Bring them to me. People will ask you what you're doing. Explain it is for the master. So the disciples had gone and got the donkey and brought it to Jesus. And they covered it with cloaks and Jesus got on and people cheered and shouted and greeted him shouting Hosanna, Hosanna and waving their palm leaves. Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven all this shouting and singing. It's not surprising that people of Jerusalem got excited when Jesus rode in and they said, who is he? And the singing crowds replied, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The time for the big meal came and Jesus took his place at the table and so did his chosen 12. He said to them, I have wanted and wanted to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. I will never eat this special meal again until it is made perfect in the kingdom of God. Then, just like we see Father David on a Sunday, he took a big goblet of wine and he thanked God for it. And he said, Share this out among yourselves, because I will never drink wine again until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread and he thanked God for it. And he broke it. Then he gave them the bread and said, This is my body. Look, one of my friends is going to betray me. It is decided that I must go, but woe to the person who betrays me. Then the twelve began to ask who it was that could possibly betray him. And then they started to squabble over which one of them was the best and the most important person. But Jesus said, other people like to be important. And some people say, aren't you great when somebody tells them what to do? You can't behave like that. The most important of you must behave like a new kid in school. And your leader must be like the waiter who takes orders and not like the diner who sits there and demands things. Look at me, I'm behaving like your servant. But my father gave me the kingdom and I will give you a kingdom. There you can sit and dine. You twelve will, will head the twelve tribes of Israel. Then Jesus went to a nearby park called the Hill of Olives and his followers went with him. When he got there, he said, pray that you are not put to the test. Then he went a few metres away and he knelt and prayed. 
Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this goblet away from me. Yet your will be done, not mine. Then he got up and found that his friends were sleeping. Jesus said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up, pray that you may not be put to the test. And whilst he was saying this, with no warning, a crowd of people came to them, led by Judas, one of his twelve friends. Then a crowd came. They were angry. Je Judas led them to Jesus. Judas tried to kiss Jesus. Jesus said, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying me? the son of man. Then one of Jesus' friends took out a sword and cut off the ear of the high priest. Jesus said, don't do that. And he healed the ear. Then he was arrested and taken away. The disciples were frightened and went away in different directions. Simon Peter followed Jesus a little way behind. It was cold and he stopped and a servant girl noticed Peter. She said, this man was with Jesus. But Peter denied it saying, no girl, I don't know him. Later, another person caught sight of his face and said, you were one of them. And Peter said, man, I was not. And an hour later, in the middle of the night, another man said, you're another person from Galilee. Surely you were with Jesus. And Peter said, man, I've got no idea what you're talking about. And then as the dawn broke, the cock crowed. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny that you know me three times. And Peter left the yard and cried bitterly. Meanwhile, the men who had arrested Jesus began to jeer him. They beat him up. They put a blanket over his head and they hit him and laughed. You're supposed to be a prophet. Tell us who hit you. As the day dawned, the leaders of the people and the priests met as a council and had Jesus brought to them. They asked, Are you God's anointed one, the Messiah? Jesus said, You will not believe a word I say. And if I ask questions, you will not answer. This is what I will say from now on. The Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of God. And the leader said, we've heard enough. And they took Jesus off and stood him before Pontius Pilate. The Roman governor they said, this man Jesus is trying to stir up a rebellion against Rome. He has told us not to pay our taxes to the Roman Emperor. And he says he is God's anointed one. That is our King. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the King of the Jews? And Jesus said, So you say. So Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds that are gathered, I can't see any basis for what you are accusing him of. You brought this man to, to me because you say he is stirring up a rebellion against Rome. I have examined him while you were here and I can't see he is guilty of any of the things you accuse him of. Certainly he is not guilty of anything that means he should be put to, be, put to death. I'll have him beaten and set free. 
Then all the council and the people shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Release Barabbas instead. Pilate asked the question three times, and each time they said, Crucify him! What bad things has he done? There is no reason to sentence him to death. But the people kept on asking and shouting for Jesus to be crucified and tortured to death. So Pilate gave his official verdict that Jesus should be put to death and he let Barabbas go. Two other criminals were being put to death that day. They crucified all three at a place called the Skull. Jesus was made to walk through the streets, carrying his cross, where people jeered, shouted, and made fun of him. They spat at him. Then he was brought to the skull, the place of the skull, and crucified. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. The soldiers took his garments and cast lots to see who would get them. And as the day went on, the clouds came and the sky became black. The Roman soldier said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Some Messiah you are, save yourself. There were two men being crucified with him that day. One said to the soldiers, aren't you afraid of God? We too are dying here. The difference is we really did do wrong, but Jesus hasn't done nothing. One said, Jesus, remember me when you get to your kingdom. Jesus replied, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. At three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out loudly, Father, I place my spirit into your hands. And then he died. The soldier in charge of the execution praised God and said, this man was innocent. The crowds who gathered went home, showing how sorry they were. But those who knew him, including the women who had come from Galilee, stood a little way, watching. One new member of the cross was a good man called Joseph of Arimathea. He had thought what the council was done was very wrong, and he went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. He took it down from the cross and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a new rock tomb. The women from Galilee followed and saw how Jesus was laid to rest and where. By now, the sun had gone down. This is a beautiful Palm Sunday morning. Look at all the colours. Listen to the sound of the birds in the background. There's so much to see, so much to hear. As we go through this Holy Week, my challenge to you is to build your own Easter garden. Normally, there'd be one in church for us to see, but now we have to be creative and make our own. When you're out on your walks, or in your garden, 
See what you can find. Use an old margarine tub, an ice cream tub, it doesn't really matter. Fill it with compost and build something creative to show Jesus' Easter garden. God bless you all.